All right, my name is Aaron Jennings with ADP. I work here in Knoxville, Tennessee. I appreciate your time this morning. Our goal today is going to be to address three items. Number one, I'd like to talk to you about the Affordable Care Act, the impact I believe it's going to have on your business. Number two, I would like to bring you up to speed on the story of ADP, really the evolution of ADP. Probably show you a little different light that you may not be used to. It helps you connect the dots financially on why a partnership with ADP makes sense, really what we do. And then third, I'd like to show you a snapshot of our technology and bring you up to speed from a perspective of an employee, perspective of a manager, perspective of a practitioner, and also the perspective of an executive or a CEO, let's say in this example. It might make a little bit more sense about what we're trying to do when you look at each role in the organization in terms of our technology. So to start out, I'd like to talk about the Affordable Care Act. You know, there's a lot of noise that's still going on out there when it comes to the ACA. There's quite a bit that we still don't know to be true about the Affordable Care Act. But one thing we can all agree on now is that it's been written into law and it's here to stay. And there's probably hours and hours and hours worth of information that we could try to address today, but I'd like to consolidate it maybe into four or five, six points that I think are going to be most impactful to your business. Also, what kind of impact it might have on your employees, and most importantly, what I believe a partnership with ADP would mean to your organization in, the, in, in relation to health care reform. So number one, let's start out with the idea of employer shared responsibility. What that means under the ACA is the idea that any company that has over 50 full-time employees or 50 full-time equivalents must offer affordable, minimum essential coverage to their group or face lofty tax penalties if not. So, first I'd like to address what do we mean by tax penalties. Number one, you have a decision to make as a business. Do we want to pay for the penalties or do we want to play? And by play, I mean offer benefits to our employees. That's something that you have to make a decision as yourself, but if you decide that you're not going to offer benefits, you're going to pay a $2,000 penalty for every employee that you have over 30 employees. No ifs, ands, or buts. Then more importantly, if you decide that you are going to play, you want to offer benefits to your group, but you don't offer affordable or minimum coverage levels, you could face a $3,000 penalty per employee. So, you know, when you really look at the big picture of pay or play, you've got to make that decision for your business, but you understand, understand that even if you decide to play, there's some risk you have out there on not offering affordable minimum coverage. So then you probably ask yourself the question, well, what's deemed as affordable or minimum? There's some different rules out there on what it means by minimum coverage types, but in terms of dollar amounts, as an employer, you're going to be required to pay a minimum of 60% toward the employer's premium. Above and beyond that, that is not that amount that the employer, or sorry, excuse me, the employee pays is not going to be allowed to exceed 9.5% of their gross wages. So when you think about all of this under shared responsibility in terms of ADP, what could a relationship with ADP really mean to my business? What I'd like to pose to you is the idea of technology or automation. How impactful would it be to have a system or a tool that can help you track if costs are going to exceed 9.5% of an employee's W-2 wages. And track if you as an employer are meeting 60% minimum coverage of the premium costs annually. All right? Also, a system that will help you track employees who chose to waive benefits coverage and the reason why. Because ultimately to avoid those penalties that could be levied against you for non-compliance, you need to have a good record of who's participating, who's chosen not to, and why did they choose not to. Was it because they wanted to go under a spousal plan? It, it really, it's, it's, it's kind of irrelevant on why they did it in a sense, but you need to have it documented because you want to make sure they don't try to go to an exchange when you are offering the minimum coverage level out there. All right? So that's the first part. Second part is a little bit simpler part, but it's the idea that you have to notify your employees of, the, of, of an exchange that exists out there. So by partnering with ADP, we can give you an automated online system where you can roll this exchange notice out to your employees and actually get them to electronically um, agree that they've seen this and they understand it. So from a compliance perspective, we keep you protected against some of those lofty tax penalties. And we also make sure that you have the right kind of information at hand anytime you might need it for audit purposes as well. Number three thing I'd like to talk to you about in relation to uh, health care reform is W-2 benefits report. This is actually one that's already in existence for most companies. Um, it states that you have to supply benefit information in a certain format on your employees' W-2s. Obviously, with ADP being a 64-year uh, payroll provider out there, we've got a good handle on how to do W-2s. 
And we have the right formats already in place to make sure that you're staying compliant and your employees really are being notified of the coverage level that they have uh, when, when it comes to their benefits. Uh, the next one is summary of benefits and coverage that are going to be required to be rolled out to your employees by law as well. So by having an automated system with ADP, we're going to give you the ability, just like you can notify your employees of the exchange electronically, to roll those summary of benefits and coverages out to your employee so that they can electronically view and acknowledge that they understand and have seen them. So that again, for compliance purposes, you can have that documentation, have it readily at hand for auditors to make sure that you're not getting some of those lofty penalties. The fifth thing that I'd like to talk to you about today is the automatic enrollment policy under healthcare reform and non-discrimination. So any employers that have over 200 employees are going to now be required by law under the Affordable Care Act to automatically enroll their employees in benefits and they can't discriminate plan types based on employee types. So before, you might have been able to offer a better benefits package to your executive team, but maybe some of your hourly employees had a completely different benefits package out there. Now, not to say that you can't still offer different types of coverage for your employees, but you at least have to meet the minimum expectations and every employee has to have the opportunity to enroll in all of your plan types. But if you have over 200 employees, you have to automatically enroll them upon hire. And then lastly is also the dependent coverage expansion to age 26. So I know that it's not quite too dramatic of a change, but it's still going to be important for you to be able to understand anybody that's working for you, if they have dependents that are under the age of 26, that they now can go up to the age of 26. So you have a good system to track those people, make sure you're not overpaying in premiums if they exceed that, but also make sure from a compliance perspective that you're not doing too little on the front end to notify them that they're allowed to have up to 26 now. Also, we're going to give you the availability to allow those dependents or your employees to do the enrollment online so that it cuts down the administrative burden for them as employees so they can be most productive in their work environment and they can also cut down the administrative burden for the HR department on the back end and have those changes updated and made quickly. So those are probably the six things that I think are most important right now under the Affordable Care Act. There's some other things that we can talk about out there like clinical effectiveness research fees, or we might be able to talk about medical loss ratio, rebates. There's some, definitely some other things that we have out there, but for time purposes today, those are some of the bigger ones that I wanted to focus on. Secondly, I would like to bring you up to speed on the evolution of ADP. And I think the easiest way to do that is to try to help kind of connect the dots financially. So, let's think of it, humor me for just a second, in terms of an income statement. You have your revenue minus your cost of goods sold equals your gross margin minus your operating expenses, or some people like to refer to this as your SG&A line item, equals our net operating income minus our interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization equals our bottom line. So, when you think about ADP in the past, or companies like ADP, more commonly than not, most people lump us into this SG&A line item, right? And it makes sense, because really you're focused on, well, if we have a competitor of ADP, can you really reduce my invoice? Or can you maybe replace one of my headcount by adding technology to our package? Really, that's where the conversation boils down to. And what I'd like to do today is challenge you to think outside the box and show you how we can actually have an impact here, here, of course here, here, and ultimately as a byproduct, here. So, now that we've really gone through the income statement, let's start to piece this all together. You might be like, alright, I get it, I'll buy it for a second. Let's say that you can impact me here, 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 and here. How are we really going to understand this more? What do you mean, Aaron? So when you think about your company, We'll call you Business X. Whether you just started three years ago or you're a CEO that's three years deep, five years deep, whatever it looks like, you had a goal at some point when you started in your position or when you started as a business. You had a lot of goals probably. Some of those goals might have been growth, whether that's through M&A, organic growth, whatever it may be. You may have had a desire to really improve or work upon your brand as a company, your reputation in the marketplace. It might have been around diversification of products, diversify. It might have been around your talent pool. It might have been around succession planning. 
and the list goes on and on and on. You can think risk aversion here. There's, a, there's quite a few things that can really go into the, what I would call, why we're in business. Why we established our company. Well, we have goals to improve our brand, to grow, et cetera. The list goes on and on. Then there's a flip side of it. You look up two, three years later in your CEO role or your CFO role or as a business owner, and you say, I had these great goals, but I wonder now, why am I no closer to achieving these when I've set out to achieve them? So I'd really like for us to focus over here for a second on the because we have a company, because we have a company, we have to have employees. Because we have employees, we have to focus on things like payroll, benefits, taxes, COBRA, FSA, employee questions, manager questions, and the list goes on and on and on. So you start to look at these two lists on the why we started the business versus the because we have business. It starts to make sense a little bit while we're no closer to accomplishing our goals. Because this is a pretty big undertaking, right? And it makes sense. Why do we spend all of our time here? Well, really the idea is because this is where a lot of teeth exist, right? If you don't do your payroll the right way, you might upset an employee. Or you might get a penalty if you don't do your taxes the right way. If you mishandle benefits, does it upset an employee or get you a penalty? Same with COBRA, FSA, the list goes on. But really, we focus on it because it has the most teeth to it. It makes sense why we want to spend a lot of our time here. But this starts to cannibalize why we're really in business. It starts to take over. And again, we wonder, why haven't we gotten there? Because all of this stuff. Well, here's the problem. We don't just have to you know, put some cool things into a system and be done with it. A lot of this stuff comes into HR, benefits, taxes, payroll, COBRA, FSA, employee questions, manager questions, the list goes on and on. But then it doesn't stop there. The problem is, is you've got somebody within your HR group trying to manage all this. It's called HR, whether it's person or your group. And when all this comes in, questions about it or data, it doesn't just stop there. Then they have to take the payroll, process it, they have to communicate the benefits to the employees or do open enrollment, new hire enrollment, terminations, whatever it is. They have to file the taxes, do the deposits. They have to administer COBRA, administer FSA, research the employee questions to communicate it back out to the employees, do the same with manager questions, communicate it back out, and the list goes on and on. So we look at this, and there's just a lot of noise that goes on. So it makes perfect sense why we're no closer to these goals because of all the noise. Now here's the interesting thing about the noise. I like to think of this sometimes in terms of a game, show that I saw, a game show that I saw once. This individual was set in a chair, and he was asked some really simple questions, like, what's your name, what's your address, where are you from, how old are you? Really simple questions that would be easy for me to answer, easy for somebody like you to answer. Then they did something kind of interesting. They put him in a, a rolly chair here. They tied his hands to the chair. They turned on a strobe light. They started spinning him in circles. They started throwing dodgeballs at him. They started throwing eggs at him. They started doing more and more and more. And then they asked him the same exact questions. How old are you? What's your address? Where are you from? What's your name? Guess what was interesting? He couldn't answer the questions. He caved in on himself because of all the noise that was going on. What's most ironic about all this, the questions didn't change. In fact, the questions were really simple. But because of all of the extra stuff that was going on, he simply couldn't focus his mind the right way to answer the questions. I like to think of that in our HR department. The things that are coming in, most of the time, they're not that hard to do. The questions aren't that hard to answer. It's just that there's so much of it going on, we can't get our mind right to focus on the right things. And here's what's ironic about all of it. Most of the time, we're not even having all this data come into one place. We're having it come into a payroll system. We're having it come into an HR system. We're having it come into a time and tenant solution maybe a talent module, a recruiting module. If we're not that robust, maybe it's just Excel spreadsheets. The list goes on and on and on. We start to have these different, what we call silos that take effect. And you look up and you're managing a lot of the same exact data in six, seven, eight, nine, ten different places. So again, not only do we have so much noise coming in, but we're mismanaging that data and overdoing the work because we have multiple systems. Here's what's interesting about all of this. Usually you have your one little $40,000 person a year job managing all of this, which is one of your largest expenses being your labor, but ironically one of your largest assets also. 
when you think of labor, you've got the, the pay plus taxes plus benefits plus the workers' comp paid to it. So you can start to see how really your cost for somebody, some maybe sometimes smaller, to manage all of this can be really disproportionate. And you start to see, wow, I think I'm starting to understand why this is cannibalizing this. So maybe you sit there and say, all right, Aaron, I'm starting to follow. I'm starting to get a bigger picture of what you mean by I'm not here because of all this stuff. But how is ADP really going to help me? Here's what I tell you. Let's think of it in four different ways. Let's say as an organization you're sitting there asking yourself, do we need help just managing the data out? Maybe that's things like direct deposit information or tax information, some other stuff out there. You just need help pushing it to the right places. We actually have a solution for that called our ABS or added value services. Let's say that you're sitting there thinking, well, actually, I might want some help managing the data in and the data out. That's where ADP's technology comes into play. As I said earlier, we've been in business for 64 years now, largest payroll provider in the world. But ironically, we've diversified our products quite a bit to stay competitive in the marketplace, but more importantly, because our clients have asked us to. Really think of it, anything that touches your employees in terms of data, payroll, HR, time to tenants, workers comp, 401k, accounts payables, you name it, we probably have a solution out there. My goal today is not to sit there and dump every one of our products on you, because you probably get bored, probably wouldn't remember it all. But really, just be thinking to yourself, if we would have managed the data in, the data out, ADP could have a great technology solution for you. Then maybe you start asking yourself the question, well, even if we had a system to manage the data in, I'm not convinced that we have the right people in place or the right expertise in place to help us do anything with it. So ADP, about four years ago, in our space here in major accounts, which we classify as 50 to 1,000 employees, we started offering an idea of BPO, or business process outsourcing, to not only help you manage the data in and push the data out, but to give you some people resources to help take some of that data in from your employees or managers, communicate that data back out to the employees or the managers or to the carriers, but also maybe give you some strategic advice or expertise on help you, how to help you better manage your why you're in business list. So again, it's taking technology, adding the people aspect to it. There's really four types of companies that we fall in, think fall into this. We can look at it as like our C plus HR player. This might say, well, we've got somebody who manages all this stuff right here, but we'll really think about it. I guess they were in payroll at one time, then they were in accounting, then they were in receivables, and then they were here, they were there, and now we've got them lumped into HR. And yeah, I mean, they're working their heart out. They're, they're really trying, but maybe they're just not the right player. So you start to ask yourself, could we reallocate them back somewhere else and get some people resources to help us better manage this data, communicate it in, communicate it out, offer some strategic resources to help you be better at this. Maybe you ask yourself the question, well, hey, we've got an A-plus HR player. What's the risk of having an A-plus HR player? You would think it's great, but really when we look at it, Think about this is the kind of person you might be paying $100,000, $150,000 a year to sit there and probably be frustrated a lot in their job because of all this noise, silo systems, maybe no systems at all, and they start saying to themselves, I'm better than this. I could go somewhere else. I don't need to stay here. So you start having this great talent that starts thinking, maybe my talents would be better suited elsewhere because they just don't have the right systems or the right people in place underneath them, the right resources to help them manage the day to day. Might be a great fit here. Companies that are going through growth, whether it's rapid growth or mergers and acquisitions, because you're starting to increase your employee size, your level of service is going to have to go up to your employee, you're prob probably in a position to have to hire people anyways. Really good solution to look at alternative resources in terms of people. Or what we like to call, this is kind of a little handy word here, a fixer up. This means that nothing's wrong with your company. It's just maybe you say, we have some struggles around recruitment, or onboarding, or talent, or training, or performance, succession planning, whatever it is. Maybe you're just looking for some more advice on how to be better at that. All right? And the last one we have out here is what we call a PEO. It's the idea of co-employment or sharing an EIN, whatever you want to look at it. But really the idea is having the data flow in, the people to help manage that on the inside, the data flow out, and we add risk. What I mean by risk is we have some assistance when it comes to workers' comp, state unemployment, and most importantly benefits, which healthcare reform out there, this is starting to become a more popular item. The interesting thing about our PEO is that it's really a numbers game. You find the data, that, you know, we, we grab the data from you and we find it that it either works or it doesn't. So at the end of the day, there's some documents that I'll probably collect for me before I leave here and we'll just do this behind the scenes. But overall, think of this as a risk continuum. 
By partnering with ADP up here, you have the most exposure to risk, which if you feel like you have that manageable, that's fine. And down here is where you're going to have the least exposure to risk because of the way that we're going to help you as an organization. So, that's really bringing you up to speed on the idea of the story of ADP. All right? This is where I would typically close for an analysis. I would set proper expectations, go ahead and get it on the calendar. Um, but this is how I would kind of end the, the ADP story here and talk to how about we don't know where we're at yet. The idea of our analysis is going to help us determine where you and I think that you should fall in terms of the noise, in terms of the people resources, in terms of the risk. We don't quite know yet, and I think it might be kind of arrogant to assume that we would know based on our conversation here today, right? So that's the idea of the ADP story. And third, real briefly, I'm going to grab the camera here by myself today. Try to set this up here so everybody can see it. Maybe it might be better just to do this right here. 